my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. My wife and I, along with others, investigate everything paranormal in nature. Every week, we will discuss everything from creepy haunted locations to ghosts to Bigfoot, UFOs, Dogman, and other cryptid creatures, and explore all things paranormal in nature. And we're back. Hey guys, so I know it's been a long time since we did a podcast. A man and I are just slammed. We are so busy with our personal lives. We've taken on so many different things that we're just like being pulled every which way. And then, of course, I couldn't do a podcast for the last month or so because I could not stop coughing. Every time I just try and form a sentence, and I'm going to cough right now, <clears throat> um, I've had an issue with coughing. I went through a cloud of i don't even know what it was i think it was cedar pollen and it got into my nose got into my mouth got into my ears got into my throat and then of course worked their way down into my asthma in my lungs and cause my asthma and my allergies go nuts and everybody at my work was doing the same exact thing so we live in texas i'm a professional driver i transport people uh all over texas through the forest and stuff like that, which is great for me because as a Bigfoot researcher, I am getting to see, I get, I go through different national forests. I go through all these cool places. Anyways, so this is um, just the normal podcast. We're going to be talking about Bigfoot. I think we're going to focus on Bigfoot pretty much from here on out. Um, and we'll talk about ghosts and haunted locations and, and UFOs and stuff like that and, and whatever else as well. In fact, I'm going to release the um, UFO research that we did where we got shut down pretty much. Uh, I did a podcast with uh, the reporter from Madisonville. I'll release that probably one of these days soon. Uh, we're also going to be doing an interview with a, uh, a another paranormal uh, investigator, and she's also a book writer. Uh, she has a new book coming out, so we're going to be talking to her this Friday. That'll probably come out next Friday. And then, uh, again, we'll, we'll get back to a more regular schedule. Uh, I'm going to try and start doing more podcasts during the week, um, maybe in my car, more or less. So you'll have to bear with me on that. But uh, anyways, I uh, wanted to get back here. Uh, I've been talking to so many people. We've met so many people, uh, and they've asked us about our Bigfoot research. We've got so many new followers, both on YouTube and Rumble. So welcome everybody who's new. We appreciate you. Um, we do podcasts on this channel. We do video shorts of our investigations. Uh, we will be doing exploring the uh, blah, exploring the unknown with Matt and Amanda. We will be doing that uh, shortly. Um, I'm just I just basically blew that up. I was not happy with the way it was going, um, and so we're gonna start completely over. And I think we're just going to spend like one week and a month on it. Um, it was just nonstop work. And uh, we just have so much other stuff going on. It's going to be really hard to do that. So we've got three, 400 hours worth of video. I've started editing some of it. I'm going to go through and just put the good stuff out here as the videos for you guys to watch. So there'll be a lot of content coming um, from our investigations uh, to this point. We might more than likely are going to go back to those locations and do a different type of show, if you will. Um, it'll basically just be more simple. I think I'm going to simplify it. It's just going to be easier. Uh, I'm going to have Amanda put her two cents into it as well. And I think it'll just be more enjoyable. It just became such a drag that it, it was just so, we were so, I was so focused on it and having it have to go a certain way that I just, it frustrated the heck out of me and it took away from the paranormal research and uh, it felt more, more and more like it was like, you know, now I'm kind of wondering, you know, I'm starting to see what people go through when they actually show, shoot an actual TV show or something, because you have to be so disciplined. You have to be, you have to, you know, you have to do certain things. You have to get certain content. You have to do all this stuff. And it, it was just a, a it turned into a headache and yeah, nobody wanted to do it. So it just became forced and it just, it, it was not going to be fun for you guys to watch. So 
we're going to start over. Uh, Amanda and I are going to start over here soon. Hopefully we're going to try and spend one weekend a month out um, in the forest looking for Bigfoot. We're going to be hitting multiple locations to go over that in just a second. So I have a, a few subjects we want to talk about. I know I apologize for the long intro, but I haven't talked to you guys in a long time. So uh, people have been asking me because I work with gentlemen and, and, and ladies that are ex-military, they're ex-police officers, they're ex-firefighters. You know, I work with a lot of oh, cool people um, that come from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, I would say about there's about a 50-50 mix of believers and skeptics. Sorry, this is Mr. Shorty here. I uh, come in to say hello at 3 o'clock in the morning. But, um, yeah, so I work with uh, believers of Bigfoot and non-believers, and I have about uh, maybe 10% that are probably on the fence. And it's always interesting to hear their takes. And it makes me think, okay, you know, I'm talking to a skeptic, and he, they're giving me information about why they don't believe. And so I'm digesting this and thinking about this. I'm going, okay, you know what? That makes sense. Why Why is that? Or why isn't that? Um, you know, so all kinds of interesting things. Also, yeah. I forgot to mention. Oops, sorry. Try not to break the new microscope. All right. We got a new microscope. It doesn't have the little thing on the back yet, but uh, we will be looking at hair samples under this, not this. This thing, I didn't realize how cheap this was. This is great for looking at leaves or whatever, but if you're really wanting to look at hair samples and stuff, this thing is like a thousand magnetized uh, magnetism. Blah. It magnifies things like a thousand times, up to a thousand times, or maybe even more. I don't remember. I have to reread the directions, but it's it's more professional. This magnifies like 10, 15, 20 times. I didn't realize um that this was not <laughs> was not really it's more of a kid's toy. So anyways, this will be our, our, a new something that we're going to be doing. I will be analyzing hair samples. Um, I have, it does take a, um, I can put my phone on the back of it. So all the paranormal gear stashed over there, not all of it. It's about half of it. The other half's in the closet over here. Anyways. So yeah, we'll be I'll be analyzing hair samples. Um, I've got a ton of them. I've got to go through. Some of them actually have skin cells. So if I look at the hair samples and it looks like a good sample, I will possibly be sending that in for a DNA check. I've been working on that for a long time. I've been contacting several people, and then you know people oh contact this person, so I contact that person, and they never respond. So all right, so let me get back to what we were talking about. I'm sorry to take myself distract myself out of the way all right so like i said i work with a lot of military ex-military ex-police officers ex whatever um ex-firefighters or firefighters or whatever a volunteer firefighters um and a lot of them ask a lot of questions and so um you know some people ask me you know are the military involved um, also they asked me if there's Bigfoots at area 51, have I ever seen a Bigfoot in the desert? Uh, are Bigfoots in cities, uh, are Bigfoots and dog man, the same thing? Um, do they get along? Or are they found in the same areas? Um, I need to get some new Bigfoot reports. Uh, and I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. Like I said, I'm going to talk about some of the locations, that we're going to be investigating. And I'll explain the show a little bit more to you guys um, when I go to the maps. It'll make a little more sense. So let me share my screen. There we go. We will go to the maps. Okay. So again, I'm here in Texas. We are not in California anymore. I had, you can see all the pins for Bigfoot. There was a, probably as many over here um, as there were in, in Texas, as there are in Texas. So essentially, we're going to be focusing just on Texas. Now, if you've recently heard, up here in the Panhandle, there's been several forest fires lately. 
in fact, they a lot of them have burned together. They're saying it's the largest uh, wildfire in Texas history. It's actually kind of going over into Oklahoma. And I don't know if it's gone into New Mexico yet or not. But they're saying that they're seeing um, Bigfoots. The firefighters are seeing Bigfoots up in this area, which kind of makes sense. There's some reports in this area, some clusters of reports. Where do you see the blue dots if you're watching this, uh, the video podcast on our YouTube channel or our Rumble channel? Uh, this is some of these dots. You, you see a lot of dots here. Let me zoom in just to Texas here. So you're seeing quite a few dots. Uh, so essentially what this is, is some of these are clusters, meaning there's more than one sighting in this area. A lot of these are dropped, not at the location of the exact location of where the, the report was made, because a lot of the time people won't tell you exactly it was, you know, it was at the corner of this and this or whatever. It was in this city and this area. And unfortunately, if you, let me just zoom in. Like, let's look in here, the same Houston National Forest. Um, okay, we'll start here. A lot of the times, it, it's hard to pinpoint the exact location because there's no, they don't have, they didn't stop to um, pin the location on the map as they were being chased out of the area by the Bigfoot, if that makes sense. But essentially, yeah, they, um, okay, okay, dude. Sorry, I'm going to, uh, Grouchy dog at three o'clock in the morning here. Probably has to go outside. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, they basically these pens are just dropped as close to the sighting as I can do. Uh, and then basically what I'm looking for when I, I have a cluster, like you have this, you see this line here, or you see this line here, or you see this cluster over here. That's what I'm looking for. So we go into this area and we go through and start looking for uh, maybe footprints. Maybe there's some hair samples. Are there tree structures, meaning teepees, um, blinds, uh, structures that look like somebody just put like a, a survival shelter together? You know what I mean? Where you have a bunch of trees either bent like into domes and, and then basically filler put in on top, maybe some old dry leaves and stuff like that or um, anything else. If there's reports of screams, howls, tree knocks, uh, we're just looking for any kind of signs that could lead us to an area where they've either been, they are, or they uh, frequent. Maybe, maybe they hunt in that area. Um, some people say that places where uh, you find those structures is a place where they bury their dead. And again, this is all just theory. I know we have believers, knowers, skeptics, and people on the fence on this channel, which is awesome. I love you guys. I love each and every one of you because you all bring something different. And you all keep me honest. So yeah, essentially that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a starting point. And then we go, okay, you know, let me move into this area instead because this is kind of out by itself. But let's say we have a point where there's two point two uh, sightings together. So now I'm looking at these, and these are way further apart than you would think. These could be miles apart. Um, we go and look at this area, and then we go and look at this area, and then we go look at this area, and then we go look at this area. <laughs> you know, and I'm basically like, it's almost like playing connect the dots. You start here. Then you work your way over here, and then you work your way over here, and then you work your way over here, and you get out and you go walk into those areas if you can. Some of the places are just it's just like so thick you can't even get in there. It might be a place where somebody heard something, and maybe they didn't have a sighting, maybe they just heard something, maybe they heard a tree knock, maybe it was a road crossing, maybe something ran from one side of the road to the other, which actually happened to me about two months ago. Uh, I'm on my way back from Longview up here in East Texas. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're looking for. In fact, we have done a lot of research here in the Sam Houston National Forest. In fact, we've hit a lot of these, where you see a lot of these pens, we've actually hit these areas. So what we're going to do, Amanda and I are going to go take our RV out, or not our RV, our trailer, travel trailer out, and probably put it in a campsite. And then we're going to go, unless we can go into one of these areas, and we're going to basically set up our, our 
travel trailer in a place as close to these sightings as we can get because there's reports of people having their trailers rocked. Um, Bigfoot's knocking on the trailers, um, looking through windows, stuff like that. And if we can, you know, have our cameras on inside the trailer or maybe even have cameras on the outside of the trailer filming this stuff, that would be amazing because then we could document it. And that's what this is all about. It's about us going out and exploring new areas, having fun, and basically, um, hopefully, shh, speaking of Bigfoots, um, <laughs> speaking of vocalizations, that's Mr. Shorty there. He's uh, just wanting attention, I guess. So essentially, um, yeah, we're going to go out into these locations and see what we can experience. And hopefully we can we'll do a day investigation where we'll look around for prints and, and other signs of Bigfoot, maybe get to collect some samples, some hair samples or whatever else we can find, and then do a night investigation. And then go to bed and, and leave cameras rolling maybe overnight and see what happens. If we're lucky enough to get into an area where there's, you know, where we can boondock or whatever, where we're away from everybody else and maybe we experience something. And then we'll share that with you. So that's basically the purposes, but it's not just going to be Bigfoot. It's going to be Bigfoot. We're going to be looking for UFOs. We're going to be looking for cryptids like Dogman and um, anything else that, um, you know, is interesting. Um, paranormal in nature. We'll be going to haunted locations, stuff like that. And we're going to hope to hopefully spend a whole weekend at these locations. So that's the plan with that. Um, so people are asking about. Bigfoot in the military. Let me go over here. Let me go out to Palm Springs. Let's see if I can find Palm Springs. There are 29 palms, actually. All right. 29 Palms has a huge military base out here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. But this is very deserty, so just bear with me for a second here while I try and find this. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't even see the base on here. Joshua Tree. So Joshua Tree is an area where there's supposedly a Bigfoot out there that everybody, not everybody, but sometimes people see every once in a while, and supposedly it's a lone Bigfoot, but I doubt it's a lone Bigfoot. Anyways, there's out here in 29 Palms, there is a... Um, Bigfoot that there's a family of Bigfoots that essentially that's a camping area of course it doesn't show the military base alright so this area you can see it's very very deserted oh here it is Edward Air Force Base there it is right here all right, so I can zoom in on this. All right, cool. So Edwards Air Force Base. I talked to a, he was a Marine Corps sniper. And he was telling me that he got stationed here. I think he was here for like a month. And when they first got here, and I think I've talked about this before. So if you've heard about that, let me tell this story before. I'll just keep this real quick. Um, when he first got here, they said that sometimes there are things that cross the runway um, that, you know, are out of the ordinary or whatever he said. And he's like, what? And he's like, don't worry about it. Do not shoot them. <laughs> like, do not shoot them. Check in with us first before you, you shoot. So he's up probably on top of one of these buildings out here. You know, watching the runways, whatever one runway he was told to watch. And he said he saw a family of what looked like four, four people basically crawl up over the, um, 
over the fence and run across the um, runway. And he said they disappeared into the base somewhere. <laughs> and he asked for permission to shoot, and he described them. And, and somebody came on and said, no, don't shoot. And I guess basically they got they kind of went into Edwards Air Force Base. Edwards Air Force Base supposedly has some areas underneath um, underneath the uh, either the runways or the buildings or something. And I don't want to get into the specifics, but essentially these things got trapped underneath <laughs> underneath the uh, in in these tunnels supposedly. <laughs> so um, it took them hours, and supposedly they assaulted several military personnel and then they finally they got out but it look was like a uh like a family it was like a mom a dad and two little kids and so essentially they went across the the <laughs> runway went into a building and got stuck under these tunnels and finally figured their way back out and then crossed the runway again and left but supposedly yeah they're out in this area somewhere um now you're asking you know how can a bigfoot survive out here you know, I imagine they they dumpster diving. And here's a couple of reports actually out here. But if you look, here's the, what is this mountain range? Oh, Angeles Forest National, um, Angeles National Forest, excuse me. Uh, in San Bernardino National Forest, this whole area, uh, Los Padres, this whole area is known for Bigfoot sightings. So it doesn't, it's not that far fetched that maybe they came out into this area um, and were maybe uh, migrating. Maybe they were coming over here to this other uh, into the Sequoia National Forest. Maybe they were crossing across and unfortunately um, wandered into the Edwards Air Force Base. And maybe they were looking for water or food or someplace to, to stay. Who knows? But, uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of military personnel that have said they've they've had encounters when they were out in the forest doing training and stuff like that. Um, one guy said that he had um, they were finished for the day and they were kind of hiking in the last, I guess, mile through the forest. And I think they were out here and in, 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 uh, I think they were in actually in the San Antonio Sam. Uh, blah. Bear with me. It's it's three o'clock in the morning. My brain is starting to shut down on me. Uh, I think they were on the Sam Houston National Forest. I don't know what they were doing, but they're doing some kind of training. It might have been a different forest, but they were out here and they were basically in the forest. And he and his buddy were the last ones in. They were kind of just. I think they were just collecting the gear, and they were supposed to put it on the truck, and they were going to call it a night. And so. Uh, they went back for the last couple of pieces of gear and he said he heard something in the, in the um, trees behind where their gear was and the tree kind of swung back and forth and he heard some grunting and I've heard about this experience. And he said that uh, all of a sudden this head pops up and it's a freaking Bigfoot. It's like a seven or eight foot Bigfoot. And it's basically standing there watching them and trying to scare him out of the area. I guess they were following him. They must have followed him to see what they were doing. And then they essentially, then essentially it ducked back down and he never saw it again. But uh, he and his buddy, I guess they never talked about it until they met me. He saw my hat, the Bigfoot hat, and uh, that was it. So anyways, I've heard lots of different stories from the, the from military personnel. Um, you know, like I said, these, a lot of these, the guys that I work with are, are retired military and, and the nicest people you ever want to meet. But um I've also heard stories of guys uh, when they come back through, and I can't give specifics, but they're coming down through, you know, from Kansas or they're coming through any of the forested area over here. Um, sometimes they go through very secluded areas, right? Uh, a lot of the times I'll go around and come through mountain ranges or whatever, and they see they're out in the middle of nowhere, no, no people. Only way in and out of this area is either to hike through the forest or essentially be on a train where the tracks are. And they're, they're seeing them. They're seeing family groups and, and stuff like that. And they're distant. They're off in the distance. You know, they're seeing them out in the clearings. They're not afraid of the trains. They're probably used to hearing them come by. 
and stuff like that. So another question uh, somebody had asked me, um, Bigfoot's at Area 51. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. You know, one of the theories out there is that Bigfoot is 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 man made. Um, it's some kind of genetic mutation that they meet in some kind of lab. Maybe it's a super soldier or something that they were trying to control. Um, I do believe that the military has captured or and killed several Bigfoots. I believe that's true. I do think that they monitor. Bigfoots, um, and I think they they put down Bigfoots that are nuisances. From what I've been told, I've heard. Um, I can't go into de- detail. Uh, if you ask, I can't. I can't answer because I've been sworn to secrecy, and I can't reveal information about that. But um, I have been told that they do put down nuisance Bigfoots if they're causing a problem. I mean, if you ever go ask a um, person, a ranger at a park at one of these national forests, they're not going to, probably not going to say anything. They're going to go, Oh, I don't believe in Bigfoot. It's not real. Blah, 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 blah. But anyways, yeah. So nuisance Bigfoot, you know, they, unfortunately, a lot of the times they get put down, um, or they get basically, I, I would imagine they go capture them. I, I would imagine the military is studying these. There's a lot of theory about Bigfoot, you know, are they aliens? Are they, you know, were they here already? Maybe were the aliens? I don't know. Again, this is going really far down the rabbit hole, guys. Uh, again, this is all just theory. This is just me talking. You know, if you want to comment down below, I'd love to hear your your thoughts on this. Uh, again, it's all just theory. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Sorry. Trying to make it through without coughing. But it's all just theory at this point um, until somebody can actually prove um, without a certainty of a doubt that they're 100% real. And, you know, I don't even know what it would take to prove 100% these are real. I mean, even if you brought a body forward, people would still find a reason they aren't real. Um, That's fake. That's whatever. You, you know, you made that, you know you could get DNA off of it and all this other stuff. And there would always be some reason Bigfoots aren't real and that's fine. I mean, again, this, this channel, this, uh, you know, this whole, this channel is open. I mean, uh, you know, we, we, we don't tell you it is or isn't. It's up to you to decide what you believe and what you don't believe. I always say, I don't expect anybody to believe until they've had an encounter or they could say it can't be anything else, but, and in this case, you put Bigfoot in there. So, okay, uh, we talked about Bigfoots in deserts. Yes, I do believe, I don't know if they live in deserts. I mean, there's there's the Bigfoots that are supposedly out in the uh, deserts out in San Diego. They call them desert squatch. Um, it is possible if there's a water source for them and there's enough food, I mean, let's just call it an 800 to a thousand pound animal. How much food would it have to consume? Calories would it have to consume to keep itself going? I mean, it's a lot. I mean, this is the same thing as, you know, somebody was telling me the other day, Oh, there's no such thing as an 18 to 20 foot Bigfoot. Um, you know, again, and they were saying, you know, the calories, the amount of calories they'd have to consume. And I do agree with that. I mean, I don't know how it's possible. I know what I saw twice, um, two different, completely different states. Um, I don't know how it's possible. Uh, are they consume? What are they consuming? Are they just eating a whole deer, you know, multiple deer a day? You know, I don't know. Uh, again, this is all just, it's all stuff that we need to figure out. And that's what this is about. It's about finding answers and whether it leads to this proves it or doesn't prove it, or like normal, leaves us with a whole bunch of more questions. You know, and, and that's the fun part about it, because every time you start to delve into the subject, I don't care how long you've been doing it, or how much DNA, or hair samples, or footprints, or whatever you've collected, um, there's always more questions. There's always more questions. And the more you research it, the more uh, it's like, okay, 
now I've got this question. If they do this, why? Why do they do that? You know, um, why did it go this way? Why did it break the branch? Why does it make tree knocks? Why does it scream? Why does it make itself known? You know, why did it look in the window? Why did it chase that person out of there? If it's such an elusive animal, why? Why does it show itself? Why doesn't it just kind of let you go by without, you know, if it, if it can stay hidden or it can cloak, why would it show itself? Again, there's just a lot of whys. Why do they build tree structures? And uh, again, the more, you, you know, the more you get into this, the more whys there are. You know, the, we want to know the who, what, when, why, and where. And the more you research it, you know, you get DNA. Okay, it comes back as unknown or primate, human, and other known, uh, other unknown species. Um, you know, just unknown. So where does that leave you? You know, and you get these footprints and nobody knows what's making them. Or they can't prove what's making them. It's it's both fun and, and aggravating at the same time. So, all right, um, Bigfoots and cities. Yes, I do believe that Bigfoots do come down into cities. Honestly, actually, I think it's the other way around. I think, let's just take Houston for a uh, minute here. Let me come down to Houston. So you can see the Houston area, right? So these reports are new, they're old. Some of these reports are 20, 30 years old. Houston is slowly but surely pushing out. It's becoming bigger and wider and wider and wider, right? Pushing towards the ocean, pushing out towards the country, pushing up towards Dallas and Austin and towards Louisiana. You know, Houston's just going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, as people move down into this area, it's just going to continue to expand. And if you're looking at the map, you can see where the Bigfoot reports are. They're all in around here. And a lot of these old, these ones down by the ocean and these ones, you know, in around the city, they're older, but they're, they're basically cutting in the Houston is surrounded by forest. That's what people don't realize. Houston used to just be a thick wooded forest. And as they've gone out, as they come in, most of, actually, if you cut Texas in half, the east side of Texas is was mainly forest. In fact, where I live, I have the forest right in my backyard. I don't have Bigfoots back there, I don't think. Um, but, you know, there was reports in this area a long time ago. And there's still reports in this area. I have forest all around me. Um, but they're, as we cut out the forest, you're displacing animals like we have a lot of deer in around here we have hogs we have raccoons we have almost every animal that lives in the forest here right these animals as we go through and re remove the forest remove their territory and push it out and push them out and make our territory you know their territory our territory you know they're they're just moving further away they're pushing out further away and so their old stomping grounds um now are you know they're not forests anymore they're urban forests they're for urban jungles as we call them so you know they these these dumpsters full of old rotten food or whatever are sitting in areas where they used to you know hunt for deer and whatever else and there's still deer i mean you go into um san antonio and like New Braunfels, New Braunfels, and you pull off there, and like when I drop a crew off, there's deer walking down the middle of the road, literally in the middle of the road. And then, you know, so, and there's Bigfoot's report, reports in and around San Antonio as well, by the way. Uh, also up, up in uh, the Austin area, not in downtown, but around, in and around, because there's still forest on the outskirts. Um, so as we push these animals out and we replace them with other things, the Bigfoots are still, you know, in the area, 
they're just push. They just have pushed further out. They're they're finding new areas to, you know, make their homes. Yeah, there's still little chunks of forest, and you I call it chunks, but there's still hundreds of acres of forest in and around these towns. So they're basically getting pushed out further out into the forest, and they're still hunting and doing whatever they're doing. But they're a little bit closer to us. So yes, we're going to see them. They might come in and, and peek in somebody's window. They might come in dumpster dive some. Uh, we get a lot of hogs, you know, even in where I live in College Station, there's hogs. Um, right off the road where I I drive into work, there's, you know, there's 50, 60 hogs. Uh, sometimes in the middle of the night, I see them just out on the grass along with deer around them and stuff like that. So there's there's still good, you know, they still can come in and grab a hog or they can grab a, uh, you know, whatever, whatever they're looking to eat that night. Um, there's places, there's still a lot of, of uh, rivers and creeks and stuff in here. So, yes, I do think that they do come in and around cities. I think sometimes they live in little stretches where there are cities. I'm working with uh, a lot of people that live up here in the Sam Houston National Forest. Now, it's a national forest, but there's still people that have, um, you know, cabins and homes in these woods. And stuff like that. And, and, and you know, there's there's chunks of the forest, unfortunately, that have been cleared. But, you know, there's hundreds of acres all around it still. So the people that have left, that have put their homes in and then left the forest behind them, there's still deer in there. There's still kinds of animals. So they're still coming down to eat and stuff. They're still coming in and checking things out and whatever else. So, yeah, again, uh, you know, it's not just cities. Um, there's a lot of little towns in Texas, and this goes from for the United States, and it goes for all around the world. I mean, there's Bigfoot-like creatures everywhere, uh, reported on almost every continent. So, anyways, um, we are looking for, let me skip on to the next subject. We are looking for reports in all these little forests. We plan on hitting, we're going to go back in here into the Sam Houston National Forest. We're going to be in the Angeles National Forest. Um, we're going to be up here in the Davy Crockett National Forest. We're working with uh, a couple of people up there. Uh, I want to go back over here to um, the Sabine National Forest. This is where Joe was. Uh, these two pens are basically where Joe was. Unfortunately, he's, if you don't know, Joe um, passed away last year in a fire, and he lived basically in the in the middle of the Sabine National Forest. Um, so he had Bigfoots literally on his property. They were crossing his property day and night. I mean, I had at least a dozen witnesses that went with me up to his property that had daytime or nighttime sightings of them. Um, so, I mean, it was just really cool. But, yeah, I mean, we want to come up here. There's just so much territory here in Texas, and you can just see all the pens. These are all Bigfoot reports. And to Louisiana, and then across down here. Uh, I do want to come down here along the coast as well. Uh, there aren't as many sightings, and I don't think that Bigfoots are, um, you know, as, as clustered in these areas. Um, I think that maybe they don't live in family groups in this, these areas anymore. Maybe they're just spread out. There might be a male and a female. Uh, maybe they're not mating as much down here, or maybe they're actually just migrating up into these territories and we're just not seeing them. But anyways, uh, we're going to be investigating as many places in Texas as possible. Uh, you can see all these pens. If you're watching on the uh, video podcast um if you're listening on the audio podcast you're welcome to come over here or you can contact me i do not post these uh pens um publicly because i'm working on a theory and uh i'm missing a lot of pens i really need to put i need to continue to go back and fill in my old pens california was almost just like texas um but yeah i had i have a lot of i have a theory um of Bigfoot activity, and I essentially don't want to share that uh, with anyone. I want to keep that kind of myself because if if I can prove this theory right, I mean it could be it could answer a lot of questions. Um, it could just be amazing. So, 
anyways uh we appreciate you guys for listening and watching uh we will have more content coming on here uh you will be starting to see some more videos of our investigations i know everybody goes well where's all your you know investigation videos they're coming um i was trying like i said i was trying to put the the show together and i just am not happy with it so i am going to go back and and look at the video i'm still editing i've got like 400 hours of video to edit um but i will post little snippets of things that won't make it into the show some of the sh- some of it we're going to go back and redo and stuff like that so um we are we are going to be putting the show out as quickly as possible but like i said life has happened and uh basically it's just it's just keeping me really busy Work, thank God, has been really busy too, which has been great. It's been helping us out a lot. So I'm very blessed with that as well. So again, thank you guys so much for uh, watching and listening. And if you can do us a favor on whatever platform you're on, whether you're on one of our audio platforms or uh, listening to our podcast on uh, one of the video platforms, do us a favor, give us a thumbs up, uh, leave us a comment. You know, if you like the show, please, please let us know. Uh, if there's something you want to hear about Bigfoot, a con- uh, content you want, uh, if you know somebody that we should be talking to, um, mention their name because we've we've done a lot of interviews that way. We've gotten a lot of people, um, and it doesn't have to be just Bigfoot. It can be anything. It could be a haunting location. It could be whatever. We want to meet as many uh, of you as we can, as many paranormal people as we can. Um uh, you know, if you have a story, maybe you lived in a haunted house, maybe you had a UFO sighting. Uh, we want to talk to you. Uh, again, there's no judgment on our show. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.